Good Sunday evening, everybody. Live and direct from downtown Memphis, Tennessee. I'm meteorologist Austin Onik. A very quiet evening. The thunderstorms that we had earlier tonight are doing a very good job starting to fall apart. We need a little bit more sunshine and the heat of the day to get these things and keep them going. But as of right now, we're just not seeing too much of anything out there that's going to keep them going for the course of the next several hours. And so we're going to take the thunderstorms gradually out of the forecast as we get into later on this evening. Currently, again, it's on the warm side, but we will be getting much hotter as we go toward the middle part of this next week. So if you have any plans for outdoors, get ready to get some more heat and humidity back into the forecast. And also, again, possibility of a few more thunderstorms out there as we head into the course of the next several days. If you're around the Mid-South area, our usual typical viewing area, again, North Mississippi, West Tennessee, East Arkansas, drop your location and your weather reports into the comments section, and we'll feature as many of those as we possibly can on on our, net, our netcast here for tonight to give you an idea as to what's going on. If you've never joined us before, this is your opportunity to ask questions about the forecast, again, what's going on in and around the Mid-South area. If you've never joined us before, again, for our website conditions and all the information we have there, wreg.com slash weather. Can't stick around for the whole weather overtime video blog. It's scrolling in the red bar beneath the screen down there. Social media information below that in the blue bar. Also the icons listed here. And if you'd like to contact me for anything else out there, just drop me a line at austin.onic at wreg.com, and we'll keep you updated as to what's going on out there. Also, coming up, we'll take a look at some more of your weather pictures, what you've sent in over about the last 24 hours, and again, some of our webcams, which has some spectacular sunsets going on at this point in time. We'll show you that coming up here in just a little while. Temperatures heading into tonight, it'll be decently comfortable, but really not much more than that. Temperatures back in the mid-70s as we head into the early portions of very early Monday morning. And then toward tomorrow morning, again, expecting a lot more clouds to be sticking around. The chances of showers and thunderstorms, I think, are pretty much going to be over with in the next hour or so. So we're not going to include those in the forecast for over overnight. But if you have plans into tomorrow, definitely want to stay tuned because we've got some changes taking place and we're going to see again uh, the possibility of more of that activity coming up here in the near future. And that could cause some problems for some outdoor activities into the Mid-South area over the course of the next several days. Paulette Morrow, 80, and feels nice in New Bern, Tennessee. Thank you very much for that one. Adamsville, Kimmy Barnhill, 81 degrees and clear. Thank you very much. Warm but breezy in Millington. Kathy Deckelman Chadwick, Thank you very much for this one at this point in time. Jared House, hope I'm saying that right. Your permission to ditch the tie, we've earned it. Well, unfortunately, that's pretty much standard issue for around here. Can't do that without permission, so sorry. But thank you very much uh, for that on there. I do appreciate that. Angela Tony from Southern Oklahoma, thanks for joining us into and around the area. Jennifer Pruitt, will it be a beautiful day because I'm getting married on Saturday? Congratulations. Uh, we'll take a look at the extended forecast here in just a little bit. Rico Willis, 82 degrees in Memphis. Thank you very much for that. Gates, Tennessee, Tracy Williams, stand by. We'll talk more about the entire Mid-South coming up in just a little while. Sun poking through a little bit of a hole in the cloud earlier. Beautiful sunset. Maybe we'll get lucky and see a little bit more sunset out there looking across the Mississippi River from the area around Mud Island from our Cotton Exchange camera. I-40 traffic over here and just barely visible out there. The light's starting to come on in West Memphis, Arkansas. Likewise, a decent view from our Hilton East Memphis camera, the towers of Poplar and Mendenhall, and again, a little bit more sunshine popping on through there just earlier. We'll try to post some more of those pictures to our social media pages coming up here in just a little while. Storm Tracker 3S radar, showers and thunderstorms over western Fayette County, making their way across northeastern Shelby County earlier tonight. Most of those have just, again, there wasn't that much in the way of continuous development out there with these thunderstorms and a lot of what we're looking at in West Tennessee is gone maybe a sprinkle or two left over not much more than that at this point in time likewise those thunderstorms into and around eastern Arkansas not much showing up at this point some leftover drizzles at this time and that's going to be about all we see out of that what's that right there that's called a sunset spike that's the radar actually detecting the setting sun on the horizon and draws a beam right to that area. You can see it at sunrise and sunset, and you don't have to have the clouds in the way to actually see it. It just detects that energy of the sun right over the horizon. So that's what we're looking at right there. Back into around northern parts of 
Mississippi. Again, not much going on, although we do have a few thunderstorms trying to keep going south of Clarksdale around Winona and down into around portions of areas of Alabama for tonight. Now, what's the deal with all these thunderstorms and rain showers? from what a lot of people are calling it in the opposite direction. If you take a look at the moving lines on screen, we've posted the wind patterns on here, and they're fairly weak down toward the surface, but you may notice kind of curving in this direction. We've got high pressure north of us, and air around high pressure in the northern hemisphere rotates clockwise. So this up here is part of that large area of high pressure, and that's why our winds have been a little cooler, and that's why these rain showers and thunderstorms have been going from the southeast back to the northwest. It's nothing weird. The atmosphere is not out of whack. It's just the way that the atmosphere winds are flowing at this time. So we're just not seeing much of anything in the way of major storm systems like a big cold front that come through in that direction to change things around. We might see that later on this week. We'll talk more about that coming up here in just a little bit. But otherwise, things are quieting down for the time being out there. Thanks, everybody, for joining us at this point in time. Grady Bennett, Heat Index this week. We'll talk about that in just a little bit. Uh, Gerard House, Jared House, perfect time to water the flowers. Very good idea. Got to water the tomatoes when I get home. It's, thanks for that reminder. 69 in Federal Way, Washington. Jesse Coleman, welcome to the show from off the, east, uh, off the West Coast. Thank you very much for that. 87 in Henderson. Celia Horton Lair, thank you very much for that one. Uh, checking in for tonight. And Spring, Texas. Dem Demetrius Orange Moore, hope I'm saying that correctly. Uh, welcome to the show there. Sprinkled in New Bern, Tennessee earlier. Paulette Morrow, thank you very much for that one. Temperatures live, real time, on your side weather from the Weatherbug Network, which you can get on your computer system. Go to this website and check out the Weatherbug icon for more information about where the Weatherbug sites are located in the Mid-South and beyond. Thousands of sites around the world. These are showing some of the warmest numbers in the Mid-South right now. And when we say right now, we mean right now. Again, just a couple of seconds grace time there. And we're seeing things pretty close to almost exactly what's happening at the present time. So 70s and 80s across the area at this point. Running the numbers into tonight, we may see a stray shower or thunderstorm early into this evening and again toward early Monday morning. But I think the chances are really dropping toward less than 5% very soon. Through rush hour tomorrow, very much on the mild side, mid-70s or so. And then as we head into and around the area of tomorrow afternoon, widespread chances of showers and thunderstorms. Wind starting to switch a little farther out of the southeast, so that's going to increase both the temperature and the dew point. So we're going to see some much more muggy conditions out there into the next couple of days, and those chances of showers and thunderstorms widespread sticking around as we go through News Channel 3 at 10 tomorrow night and right on into around daybreak on Tuesday as well. So something to think about for right now. Adrian Terry, good grilling weather, cicadas being annoying, and mosquitoes are definitely out. Yeah, I'm trying to en encourage the frog habitats in my backyard, and the spiders spinning those webs are very welcome to stick around and feast on all the skeeters that they want to out there. But uh, Adrian Terry, thank you very much for joining us from Horn Lake. Vicki Chalk Metter, another order for rain, please. We'll see what we can do about that. Uh, thank you very much. And everybody else who's checking in from around around the rest of the Mid-South area for them tonight. Here's what it looks like again for the next several days. This is still below normal. Temperatures in the upper 80s as we head into tomorrow. Lower 90s as we get into Tuesday with scattered chances of showers and thunderstorms. Off and on, the best chance it looks like it's going to be on Tuesday with about a 60% coverage chance. Less than that as we go toward Wednesday, but then also notice from here on out the temperatures head upwards again into the mid-90s by the time we get our way into and around the end of the week and next weekend. So I think it was Grady Bennett who was saying a uh, question about uh, the possibility of heat indexes. Yes, that's a very good possibility, I think, uh, later on this week as the temperatures head upwards. And we start to get, again, all that gulf moisture once again, so decently steamy. And I would be, not be surprised to see some triple-digit heat indexes out there toward week's end and next weekend. Now, earlier forecast, we had less chance of anything involving showers or thunderstorms for Saturday and Sunday. That, again, looks to be changing with some isolated showers and thunderstorms possible there. And that forecast goes right on in through mid-July, so just not really a lot that's going to be changing with this forecast, it looks like, as temperatures remain hot into next week. Lower to mid-90s for highs, mid to upper 70s for lows, 
and chances of showers and thunderstorms dwindling by just a little bit into next weekend, but still sticking around for a while. So this right here, about as typically July as you can possibly get for much of the Mid-South area at this time of the year. Not much changes. The summer doldrums are definitely upon us from what it looks like into and around the area for the next couple of days, at least through this next weekend or so. All right, heading off to the tropics. The Gulf is quiet for now. Doesn't look like anything really going on there. We do have a couple of systems to talk about. Number one is closer to the United States, and that is Tropical Storm Chris. It is now a tropical storms gaining strength but it's not going any place winds of about 50 miles per hour. It's going to encounter a couple of storm systems moving through north of it. The second system in about the next 48 hours is going to catch this thing like a fishing hook and going to be dragging it out into the Atlantic up the eastern seaboard and over toward the Canadian Maritimes. It looks like a good possibility that this could be a hurricane by about this time tomorrow at least, maybe even overnight tonight. But the good news is that it looks like it's going to be staying away from the United States and heading away from us back to the east northeast eventually but if I was heading to the Carolinas DC anywhere around the area of Chesapeake Bay I would watch this very carefully to make certain this doesn't come too much closer because remember as this spins around the winds could bring a lot of wind a lot of heavy tides so your vacation anywhere up and down the eastern seaboard from the Carolinas northward could depend on what this thing does in the next about 24 hours, so please keep an eye on that. Barrel down to the south is on its way toward the and over the Lesser Antilles, and unfortunately, the track of this is going to be taking it, it looks like, almost right close to Puerto Rico. And that's the last thing they need right now. The good news on that is that it looks like Beryl is only going to be a tropical depression by the time that it arrives in the course of the next couple of days. So it's going to pass right south of Puerto Rico and maybe be a problem for around Hispaniola. Dominican Republic and Haiti could be some strong rainfall there, but it does not look to be a possible hurricane anytime soon. Now, off the coast of the United States, again, Chris looks to be, as it kind of wanders a little bit, gaining strength, taking off to the northeast as we head toward late Tuesday. This could be a Category 1 hurricane, winds of about 75 miles per hour in that area, so it's a minimal hurricane, but remember, it only takes one to cause problems, so if you're heading anywhere toward North Carolina or north than that, I would keep a very close eye on this. Keep attuned to the weather experts especially, and we'll keep you updated on the chances of this thing, depending on which way it goes. And of course, tune in to the National Hurricane Center for more on what's going on, the official source for all of our information that we get to give you about the tropical storm season out there. Currently, again, not bad with sunset in progress and some gorgeous colors out there. Louis Haskett catching a very nice view from northeast Arkansas earlier this week. James R. Gulledge watching the lawn mowing duties getting taken care of around Humboldt, Tennessee, after the storms moved through. Caused a little bit of some damage and throwing around a few things. And from this morning, Deborah J54, also from Humboldt, Tennessee. Beautiful view of some sunrise-colored clouds out that direction. We have a whole bunch more. We're trying to post them on social media. If you've got pictures, please send them along to us. We'll be glad to post them on our newscasts and also here on our webcasts as well. And you can tweet them to me, especially at aonic underscore WREG3. Be glad Glad to have you along for the ride on that. Opportunity tonight to see a satellite, at least a limited opportunity anyway. It's called the Mayak Satellite. It was launched in Russia. It's a pyramid-shaped satellite designed to be very bright, very reflective. Unfortunately, at the angle that it's going to be, passing close to the Mid-South tonight and the angle of the sun, which is going to be well past the, sun, the western horizon. It's doubtful that we're going to be able to see this in a spectacular detail, but it will be decently bright enough to see if we don't have enough cloud cover out there interfering. You're going to have to look to the north-northeast at just before midnight at about 1148. It'll be visible for hopefully about two minutes or so. It's a fairly elusive satellite. Not many people have spotted this or captured it, but if you want to give this a try, this will be the brightest object in the sky tonight. No iridium flares, 
No sign of the International Space Station. So if you'd like a challenge right before midnight tonight, 1148, rising from the northeast briefly before fading as it gets over that haze layer, the Mayak satellite might be your best opportunity to see, again, some of the satellites that are available out there to take a look at some backyard astronomy. This available, again, from our astronomy portion of our blog at Skyblog3, if you'd like to see more there on that. Catch my forecast on the East Arkansas Broadcast Network stations into Monday morning. Country 92.5 and Oldies 102.3. And, of course, I'll be back on with Bob and Josh bright and early tomorrow morning on Yahoo Sports Radio Monday through Friday. Can't catch them in the Memphis metro area on AM 730. Dial them up online at TalkBackLiveNetwork.org for more sports chat and a whole bunch of stuff to talk about there as we go into very early tomorrow morning on that. That'll do it for this edition of our Weather Overtime video blog. Again, questions, concerns, anything else you'd like to see on here, please let me know at austin.onic at wrg.com. Coming up tonight at 10, Kristen Holloway has a busy day in news. Megan Rice has a wrap-up on all the day's information about sports. And, of course, yours truly with more information about what's going on with weather and your updated forecast in the Mid-South area. We'll have that coming up in just about an hour and a half. So stick around for more on that. Uh, Luis Lacotera, blah, blah, blah. Should have had a blobbity in there that might have spiced up the comment a little bit. Otherwise, nothing I haven't heard before, but thank you very much for that one. Stick around for more with News Channel 3 throughout the rest of the weekend, and we'll keep you advised live and direct from downtown Memphis, Tennessee. I'm meteorologist Austin Onik. We'll have more tonight on News Channel 3 at 10.